those watching on video are able to hear you. You're required to wear your mask until you're at the podium. Then if you wish, you may remove your mask while you're making your, your uh, speech. Uh, once you're finished your speaking, you were asked to put your mask back on and return to your seat. So I will call this or, uh, meeting to order at 7.02. Uh, declare, declaration of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Seeing none, the uh, special business is potential changing in policing from the current OPP model to the Elmer Police Services. As you are aware, the Township of Malahide has been, uh, for several decades, has had a contact with the Elgin OPP detachment to provide servicing to Malahide. Over the years, there's been concern expressed by council members and the public in both Elmer and Malahide regarding the costs of policing. There have been suggestions made that it might be less expensive for both municipalities and Malahide was to contract with the Elmer police rather than continue with the current OPP contract. In August 2017, Council decided to explore the potential for cost saving and did formally ask the Town of Elmer providing a costing proposal to the Township for the provision of policing for the Elmer Police, from the Elmer Police. I want to note that the request to Elmer was not because of the dis dissatisfaction with the Elgin OPP, in fact, Malahide Council has indicated numerous times in recent years that they are pleased with the current level of service that is being provided by the Elgin Detachment. Uh, the decision to seek a costing from Elmer was entirely based on a potential for future cost savings. So in late 2019, the town did provide a costing proposal to Malahide. That proposal was then referred to the external consultant to review as part of the township's ongoing service delivery review. The consultant was asked to provide an opinion regarding this, the feasibility of the proposal. Earlier this year, Performance Concept Consulting submitted their report to Malahide. It concluded the Elmer Police Service is indeed capable and well situated geographically to provide policing to the township and would meet or exceed current adequacy standards. Further from that report, suggestions that there is a potential or a significant financial benefit for Malahide if we were to move forward with a 10-year contract with the Elmer Police. Even after receiving that consultant's report, Malahide Council still had a number of questions. So before deciding whether or not to proceed with a negotiated formal contract with the Elmer Police, the Council established an ad hoc working group consisting of myself, Deputy Mayor Jaguer, Councillor Widner, and Councillor Cerna, as an alternate. The working group was to work with the municipal staff to resolve any outstanding questions related to the Elmer proposal and to develop a strat strategy to obtain the public out input. The working group has ob obtained additional information background from Elgin OPP and Elmer Police in order to develop a detailed comparison of the two police services. The comparison is available on the township website if you wish to review it. In addition, this meeting tonight is being here, held to hear your thoughts on the proposal and police services in general. But we, before we open the floor to the public, we'd like to provide you with some additional information to help you formulate an opinion. Tonight, we have council and staff, but as well, um, I should tell us that Rick Cern is, is under the weather and Scott Lewis is not present because there was a death in the family. We do have David Tilley, and he will be on Zoom. Uh, Chief Horvat from Elmer, just put your hand up there, Chief. And uh, Nick, put your hand up from Elmer Police as well. Uh, Mike Butler for the OPP, Mike. And uh, Franca Capisi is the superintendent from the West Region. Welcome all. So next we'll move on to uh, Michelle, I believe.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, the purpose of my uh, information this evening is to provide a bit of an overview of the consultant's report that was prepared earlier. So as the mayor had indicated, Performance Concepts Consulting was asked by Malahide Council to review the value for money and the operational feasibility of the proposal that had been received from the Elmer Police Service to provide policing for Malahide Township. A detailed report from the consultants is already been, sorry, has already been submitted to council and is available for viewing on the township's website. Tonight, I will just provide an overview of some of the key points that are contained in the report. In reviewing the Elmer proposal, the consultants considered both the current and proposed policing models. Currently, policing is provided to the township through a municipal policing contract with the Elgin Group OPP. This contract includes all of the lower tier municipalities in Elgin County with the exception of the town of Elmer. The OPP model divides Elgin County into three patrol zones. The East Patrol Zone includes Malahide Township and Bayham. The OPP currently assigns two officers to that East Zone on a 24 hour, seven day a week basis when staffing allows. The consultants have pointed out in their report that there is no guarantee that OPP officers will be located within Malatide Township at any given time. But the OPP does have a borderless policing model, which allows police resources to be dispatched from across Elgin County and beyond as needed to respond to calls for service in Malahide. The Elmer Police Services proposed staffing model would provide a regular presence of three officers in the overall entire Elmer Malahide patrol area. The Elmer proposal ensures that at least one police officer is assigned to Malahide at all times. Again, there will still be occasions when that officer may be required to back up other officers outside of Malahide, but for the most part, the consultants have concluded that one officer would be committed to Malahide. The consultants also considered the short-term and long-term financial implications when they were conducting their review. They have noted that OPP costs billed for 2018 were about $110 per Malahide resident or about $307 per Malahide property. The 10-year average cost in the Elmer proposal represents a policing cost of about $118 per Malahide residence and about $325 per Malahide property. The consultants have indicated in their report that there is a significant benefit for Malahide with the Elmer proposal. That is the long-term budget certainty. The Elmer proposal provides a guaranteed average increase in policing costs of about 3% per year for the duration of the proposed 10 year term. The consultants have also indicated that this level of cost containment is unusual across the Ontario municipal sector. And the consultants suggest that this should be a major consideration in Malahide's decision-making process moving forward. In summary, the consultants have concluded that the Elmer Police Service is capable and well-situated geographically to provide policing to the township of Malahide. Further, it is the consultant's opinion that the Elmer Police Service has proposed a higher level of dedicated service at a very similar cost to that currently provided by the Elgin OPP. As I mentioned at the outset, if you wish to obtain more information, the entire report prepared by Performance Concepts Consulting is available for viewing on the township's website. Thank you, Michelle. Now the next part is going to be on Zoom in CISO. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, Mr. Tilly is available. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Is everybody? Everybody can hear? Okay. Go. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Tilly. I'm a police services advisor with the Ministry of the Solicitor General and I'm assigned to Southwest Ontario, including Malahide and Alma. I thank you for the, information to, uh, the invitation to provide information on the current process the township is going through in discussing its current requirements for providing adequate and effective policing as required through the Provincial Police Services Act. Please note that I'm not prepared to comment on the specifics of the policing proposal you have received from Alma or the current policing you received from the Ontario Provincial Police. I would, however, like to inform all those present on some relevant matters. The Ontario government has passed the new Community Safety and Policing Act, which will govern the provision of policing in Ontario at a future date. This act will come into force at a date to be proclaimed by the Lieutenant Governor and Council. There is significant work to be done developing regulations to support the new act before it can be proclaimed, and this work is ongoing. 
In the meantime, the current Police Services Act 1990 remains in force, likely for the remainder of this year and into a significant part of the next. I would now like to draw your attention attention to some relevant requirements of the current Police Services Act. Section four of the Act requires every municipality to provide adequate and effective policing. The ways in which this can be done are set out in section five. Section five of the Act does provide that Malahide and Alma as, as municipalities sharing a border may enter into an agreement under section 6.1 for Alma to have its Police Services Board provide policing to Malahide. Section 6.1 states that policing provided is subject to the conditions set out in the agreement between the two municipalities. This essentially means that the councils of Alma and Malahide are the parties to that agreement. The Alma Police Services Board would be the service provider on behalf of Alma Council and would not be a party to that agreement. Alma Council directed the Police Services Board to develop a proposal for policing Malahide, which has been presented to Malahide after Alma Council approval and is now being examined. Should Malahide reject the costing proposal, the matter would be closed. Should Malahide Council approve the proposal in principle, the Ministry would then recommend Alma staff draft a formal agreement setting out the services to be provided along with the terms and conditions. The, the draft agreement should be approved by Malahide Council prior to being sent to, I mean by Alma Council prior to being sent to Malahide. If Malahide approves, it will take effect in accordance with the terms of the agreement. If Malahide Council modifies the agreement, it will then return to Alma Council. If no agreement is reached, the matter is closed. Should the proposal and the agreement be accepted, due regard will need to be given to Malahide's uh, contractual obligations with the OPP. Malahide is currently one of six municipalities participating in a joint agreement with the Solicitor General for the OPP to provide policing. Notice of termination should be sent as set out in that agreement. I would also suggest that the partner municipality should also be notified. There is currently no requirement under the Police Services Act to obtain the approval of an external agency before entering into the agreement with ALMA. The Act does require that the Solicitor General monitors the ALMA Police Services Board to ensure that adequate and effective policing is provided. This will include policing Malahide if an agreement is made. Finally, I would like to touch on the civilian policing governance arrangements should Malahide Council choose to enter into an agreement with ALMA. Currently, Malahide participates in the Elgin Group Police Services Board, jointly with five other municipalities in the OPP policing agreement. Should Malahide Council choose to enter into an agreement with ALMA, Section 6.12 of the Act provides Malahide Council the option to select a person to advise the ALMA Police Services Board on the objectives and priorities for policing services in Malahide. The agreement between the two municipalities should address how an advisor selected by Malahide will have interactions with the Police Services Board. So that's the end of my uh, points I would like to I'd like to raise at this meeting, but I'm happy to stay around should there be any questions. Thank you, David. And if you could stay online, we are going to have two other presentations and then we're going to open to the public that may want to talk to you personally. Absolutely. Thank you. Next, we'll have Chief Horvat come up to the podium there, Chief, and uh, have your opening statement. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first and foremost, on behalf Sorry, of Chief, interrupt, interrupt, but can you hold on just one second? We're having just a small technical glitch. Okay, Thank no you. Problem.
Sorry, go ahead, Chief. Thanks very much, Michelle. For, uh, first and uh, foremost, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the uh, Elmer Police Services Board and Elmer, uh, Elmer Police Service, I would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity uh, to present to you the uh, proposal for uh, policing services uh, by Elmer Police Service to, uh, to Malahide communities. Um, one of the areas uh, that we pride ourselves uh, in and that we have developed uh, in our last uh, strategic direction is uh, our vision and the mission statement. Our vision statement is to provide the highest quality of service by being accountable, compassionate, professional, and efficient in our response to diverse community needs. And uh, following up with that, our mission statement is to work in partnership with our community to prevent and reduce crime, safeguard public trust, and improve the quality of life throughout dedicated and professional service delivery. And certainly uh, on behalf of the men and women of Elmer Police Service, uh, that is our goal. And that is something that we have provided to Elmer community. And certainly uh, we intend to uh, continue on if we were successful in the uh, Malahide proposal to deliver that same service to uh, Malahide residents and Malahide communities. Um, community engagement is a, uh, a large component of our service delivery and uh, crime prevention. Just uh, uh, three items that uh, I want to identify specifically that our officers are engaged uh, in on an annual basis. This year, we have introduced the elementary school program, which enhanced our uh, values, influences, and peers, and added the B, the real U, to the grade six uh, students. And uh, the, the officer assigned to that particular portfolio uh, completed 271 hours in school presentations. The uh, Be The Real You program uh, allows the students to engage and be more uh, interactive with the officers uh, to ensure that they actually get the concepts of what we're trying to teach uh, when it comes to reduction of crime, reduction of uh, bullying in school, and uh, safeguarding uh, with respect to online uh, activities. Uh, beat patrol hours, again, this is one of the areas that uh, we pride ourselves on, where the officers are visible in the community. They do foot patrols on a regular basis, and in 2019, our officers conducted 400 hours of uh, beat patrols in uh, downtown core and other areas uh, of, uh, of our uh, responsibility. Ride, check, uh, ride checks is another area that we uh, have enhanced our service delivery over the uh, last three years. And again, that's all part of the road safety. We wanted to make sure that the residents of Elmer and those traveling through our highways and roadways are safe and uh, free from anyone that is uh, consuming alcohol or drugs and driving while impaired under the influence. And we have increased that by 14% from 2018 and 2019 and conducted 159 ride checks in 2019. One of the areas that I looked at when uh, we looked at the proposal for uh, Malahide policing is to make sure that uh, it is feasible to do so with respect to the calls for service. So uh, the area that you see here, it is a comparison of a three-year average of what uh, our calls for service are in Elmer and uh, what uh, the average per officer call ratio is to ensure that uh, we provide that service delivery and the officers are not bogged down just simply with the calls for service. And as you can see, our average in 2019 was 243 calls for service per officer. And uh, in comparison to Malahide, based on the statistics that we've obtained, the average call for service per officer would be around 300. So relatively uh, equal comparison. And certainly uh, it is something that uh, we would be able to uh, manage without problem at all, uh, because the comparison is very similar to what we currently have and what the officers respond to on a daily basis or on an annual basis. The other area that, looked, that uh, we examined is the uh, top 15 calls for service in both communities. And uh, the, the area of uh, top calls for service is very similar in both, uh, both uh, counties. Uh, for example, police assist, we responded to most of those calls at 8.8%. 911 calls is at 7.3%. Uh, 
and going all the way up to OPP assist, which was at 1.82% for 2019 year. And those were the top 15 calls for service for Elmer. Examining that for Malahide, and again, looking at the statistics, a lot of those calls are very similar in nature. So there's not much difference between the two municipalities or two areas of policing uh, when it comes to uh, the types of calls that our officers uh, would respond to. So certainly if you look at from Malahide's perspective, the top 15 calls, the number one call for service is 911, which I assume are uh, false calls for service or false alarms, uh, followed by traffic uh, enforcement, record checks, traffic complaints, motor vehicle collisions, assaults, uh, phone calls, and continuing up to uh, break and enters at 1.41% of the response time. So again, looking at the two uh, areas that uh, we would be responsible for, uh, the calls for service are very, very similar uh, in both, uh, both uh, responsible areas. I then looked at the, uh, the crime comparison. Again, one of the things that uh, ties officers with a lot of workload is uh, when you actually have to do a criminal investigation and uh, lay charges. So again, we looked at the comparison there to make sure that uh, we are capable of providing that service delivery and looking at all of the crime analysis, uh, the assaults, for example, for Malahide, they were at 2.7%. In Elmer, we were at 1.5%. Break and enters were relatively even when it comes to break and enters in terms of investigations. Mischiefs, same thing. Uh, so there isn't really too many anomalies here when it comes to criminal investigations. And again, that would give us the indication that there isn't that workload in Malahide that would bog us down with criminal investigations where we would not be able to do some of the proactive initiatives that we currently do in Elmer. Um, one of the areas that uh, we also pride ourselves on is the response times. Uh, when, when I took a look at the uh, response times in terms of some of the most important calls for service for us, in terms of making sure that the officers get there in time, domestic investigations where potentially you have a, a, a volatile domestic uh, incident, our response time was three minutes. Mental health calls for service was three minutes. Missing person, 1.5 minutes. Assaults, 2.5 minutes. Break and enters not in progress, eight minutes. OPP stolen vehicle assists, five minutes. OPP assault assists, three minutes. OPP traffic assists, one minute. OPP break and enter assist, five minutes. And ambulance assist, 2.5 minutes. And those are our response times to, uh, to those uh, types of incidents. Uh, I, I, whoop, I do wanna make a, a note on here that uh, our response time to uh, Malahide may be slightly slower, uh, basically due to the large geographical area. But to reduce that response time, we're prepared to make sure that we have officers in the north and south patrol zone of Elmer, so they can respond to any calls in Malahide uh, in a quicker fashion and uh, in a timely manner, certainly on those uh, high priority calls. One of the other things that we uh, pride ourselves on is also the enforcement initiatives in our community. One of the big areas that uh, we need to focus on is traffic enforcement and criminal code enforcement of, uh, of laws. Uh, again, looking at our uh, numbers from 2017 to 2019, they have gone up. So every officer contributes to the workload analysis and traffic safety and also uh, uh, criminal uh, uh, safety and uh, apprehension of uh, criminals that are uh, within our communities. So again, for all violations in 2019, our officers have laid 1,469 charges overall in Elmer. And that's a pretty good, that's, that's a high number for the number of officers that we have. So again, we pride ourselves on that. We, uh, we pride ourselves on uh, traffic safety and criminal investigations in solving those crimes. Now, looking at the uh, cost factor, which again, uh, that's one of the areas that certainly uh, from a policing perspective, everyone is looking at uh, how much does it cost to provide a service delivery? And uh, again, we have provided you with a uh, 10 uh, year projected costs. And uh, Michelle, if I can get the next slide, please. Uh, this just gives you a better idea of where we're at in, in terms of the costs. And um, again, over the course of 10 years, 
a projected savings to malahide would be approximately five hundred and ninety thousand dollars based on the um, based on the uh, areas that we were looking at and the increases that uh, I included in there to ensure that we do not go over the estimated costs. So again, when you take a look at year one and year two and year three, uh, those are based on the actual negotiated wages for Elmer police officers for year 2020, 2021, and 2022. Again, they were at 1.26, 1.7, and 1.7%. Um, moving into year four, I wanted to make sure that uh, we, don't, uh, we, we don't exceed the 2% or 3% uh, and provide you with the uh, number where we would have to go back and say, no, we cannot provide you that service. So again, 3% is a very, very conservative number when it comes to policing. And in fact, uh, the 2% that you have been uh, uh, provided with in terms of the OPP uh, cost over the course of 10 years is more in line with what it would cost you for policing. Looking at Elmer's 20-year uh, um, historical ratio or historical average, we're at about 2%. So again, um, I'm, I wanted to make sure that we don't go over the, uh, the 2% and that we have to come back to Malahide Council that the costs would be increasing. And uh, hence the reason that I included 3% in there. So that cost could actually go down. And if, if in fact you were to compare the 2% all the way down to the 10 years, the Malahide savings would actually be around 960,000 over the course of 10 years at 2% increases, which is again, historical average for, for us. And then um, again, looking at the total 10 year cost uh, to Malahide would be 10,747,000. That would be average per year at 1.74 million per household average taking into consideration uh, 2,950 households would be $364.32. Per billable property, which is at $33.79, your cost would be $318.07. And um, uh, 2021, Elmer police cost per billable property uh, is estimated at $282.28. Looking at the OPP numbers, uh, 2019 uh, per billable property, 295.95, uh, where the actual was uh, one, $1 million. And for 2020, your estimated uh, billable property cost is $306.45 based on the numbers that uh, I've been provided with. And again, that is our proposal. Uh, thank you very much again on behalf of the Police Services Board and Elmer Police Service. Um, have a good evening. Sounds good. Sure, I'm height adjusted there. I'm a little shorter than the chief, so hopefully I'm in the screen there. Well, I'd like to thank the mayor and the deputy mayor, members of council, and certainly members of the ad hoc committee uh, for inviting, uh, members of council for inviting me here uh, to speak uh, on behalf of the OPP. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge and thank Superintendent Frank Campisi was the director of operations for West Region for her independence and support of the West or of the OPP uh, in Elgin County. The OPP in Elgin County have been the police service of record of Malahide for a considerable time, as indicated by the mayor. Throughout, we've enjoyed an excellent working relationship with Malahide Council, the Elgin Group Police Services Board, community stakeholders, emergency services, and our neighboring police services. Elgin County continues to be in the top 20 safest communities in all of Canada. We live in a, in a truly safe uh, area. The latest detachment survey in 2017 showed that 98.4% of respondents felt very safe 
or safe in their communities policed by the Ontario Provincial Police. In review of the scope, excuse me, in review of the scope of the intent of the ad hoc committee, I prepared a short presentation that will speak to two identified goals. So essentially they were seeking to find uh, equitable policing service or similar policing service at a reduced cost. And that's uh, how I put this presentation together. Uh, certainly the chief spoke on behalf on what they can provide as the police uh, service of record. We've provided our statistics as far as calls for service uh, and budgeting have all been provided and are on the website. So I, I don't wanna spend the time talking about those numbers. What I wanna <clears throat> cover, excuse me, is how the billing process takes place uh, for the Ontario Provincial Police uh, throughout the province. Uh, some of these are, are quite complex, but I'll just give you a bigger snapshot of why your bill is what it is. So you understand why you're charged that amount. So you can see from this first slide that the overall Ontario Provincial Police budget is $1.174 million for the entire province. But it's broken down into two categories. The first one is provincial specialized responsibilities. We are responsible for policing throughout the province at many different levels. Uh, as a result of that, that right side of that graph, 64% or $752 million represents the cost to provide these services throughout the province of Ontario to all communities. Um, how that breaks down, sorry, I think we missed, if you can go back and Michelle, sorry, one, or go ahead one slide. So it's broken down into two categories. As you can see on this left slide, <clears throat> excuse me, it's 409 million for municipal policing. So Malahide represents one of 326 municipalities that contract the OPP for service, for policing, for frontline policing. And you'll see that on this graph that speaks to the detachment staff. So that represents how many officers work at the detachment, the buildings, the costs associated to that fleet, support staff, uh, all of those uh, are indicated in that graph. And sorry, Michelle, if you could go back one. Because we are the provincial police, we are mandated to provide many services to many different levels. You will see that the categories here include traffic safety, investigations, intelligence, and special response teams. And I want to speak to that because it's important as uh, Malahide Township receiving service from the OPP, you are entitled to receive all of those services. Those are provided to you uh, as uh, a contract location for the Ontario Provincial Police. Some of those resources, which are, which are categorized as the specialized response teams, are available to smaller municipal services that don't have those uh, specialized teams in order that they would meet the adequacy standards set out by the Police Services Act of Ontario. Uh, those are the teams that are at the bottom. So those refer to things as our tactical teams, our helicopters, aviation services, canine units, uh, those things are available currently to the people of Elmer, uh, the, the small, uh, of small police service, upon request to the OPP on a case-by-case -case basis. The current practice of the Ontario Provincial Police is not to bill for those. It is, however, in the Act that those could be billed for in the future. And again, subject to, as Mr. Tilly has said, we don't know what the new Police Services Act looks like. So those things will be supplied. So if we talk about uh, the OPP not providing service to Malahide, not all of these things that you see on the right will be available to you in Malahide uh, on a daily basis with us being the, the police service provider. And a lot of that is the tra traffic safety stuff that you see at the top, aircraft enforcement, our provincial traffic safety units. So we have regional traffic enforcement that deals with commercial motor vehicles, obviously serious motor vehicle collisions and reconstruction of those collisions, snowmobile, ATV patrols, and certainly our marine vessel that we have here in Elgin County. Uh, also that extends to investigations uh, that are more detailed and more complex. So as a detachment commander in Elgin County, I can reach out to these other services and use those in Malahide because you are contracted there. If, if, Mal if the town of Elmer is providing your police service, those things are not guaranteed to be provided. They can be requested by the chief to the commissioner, but they are again evaluated on a case by case basis. We can keep moving, Michelle. I get, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just going to grab some water. <clears throat> so, 
So to speak to staffing, <clears throat> and specifically the Elgin County OPP, detachments operated, operate, <clears throat> great time to lose my voice, operate on an integrated service delivery model. So whereby we provide combined policing services throughout the region, and it's not specific to one detachment. The OPP track these services that we provide on a daily activity report. So our officers track whether that work is done in Malahide, Central Elgin, Bayham, and the billing reflects that in the calls for service, as well as if our officers provide services outside of the detachment, or if we receive assistance from other detachment. That's very influential in the bill, you won't be paying for those services. So this integrated service delivery model, uh, enhanced flexibility in meeting changing policing demands and lower costs and having one detachment for each municipality. So it allows us to spread out our resources. Provides the economies of scale by allowing municipalities and the province to share the cost of detachment supervisory and administrative positions and detachment infrastructure. And it allows for coordinated policing strategies for the issues that often span multiple jurisdictions. Being part of a larger regional type policing allows communities, communities to engage and partner with various, various agencies. In other words, community safety agencies outside their municipal boundaries. I just wanna explain, <clears throat> that's awful. Just wanna explain the billing model a little bit more in detail. So the, the chief talked about uh, the billing uh, that, or the contract that they're proposing. The billing is set <clears throat> by the Ontario Provincial Police through our Municipal Policing Bureau and policy. So as a detachment commander, I'm not in a position to come up here and say, this is how much we would charge or offer those. It's, it's set as a, as a provincial billing uh, structure. So the list of legislative policing requirements of the Police Services Act or the Ontario Regulation 3-99 in relation to adequacy and effectiveness of police services extensive and it requires substantive investment uh, of uh, staffing, equipment, training, regardless of how often they're utilized. The base service infrastructure, supervision, administration, and frontline policing is necessary to provide adequate policing to ensure general safety and security of the municipal municipalities. Uh, a fair billing model <clears throat> should take into account all policing functions and let a legislative responsibility. So again, that larger portion of that budget. So municipalities continue to be charged for the actual salaries and benefit costs of detachment officers that serve the 326 OPP municipal uh, police service areas. So you pay your portion of those 326 municipalities that use the entire OPP service. There's a municipal <clears throat> cost recovery formula that is used to recover those costs for specific support services and other direct operating expenses that we have at a detachment. So as with the previous process, the OPP will ensure that municipalities do not pay for provincial responsibility. Those are those provincial uh, things that I showed you that are on the right hand side of that graph. You will never be charged for those as OPP users. We're subject to anyone that is not contracted with the OPP in the future Police Services Act. There is no guarantee currently at this time. I, and I can't uh, state that. So the OPP billing model <clears throat> is based on two factors. There's a base cost for service. That base cost for service essentially pays for the detachment, the officers, frontline uh, crime prevention, officers availability to respond to emergency calls for service, 24 hours a day, general patrol, victims assistance, ride programs, traffic safety, uh, community policing, intelligence, ga intelligence gathering, et cetera. Officer training, all inspector and staff level, uh, staff sergeant positions are part of that base cost. You then get billed for your calls for service. So we're talking about assaults, break and enters, mischiefs, drug uh, offenses, could be provincial offenses, mental health, that calls, motor vehicle collisions, and, and that goes on. They then take the total number of calls. So if we're talking about a break and enter, they take the total number of break and enters at the OPP police, and they divide it uh, by the, uh, the total time that it takes, and that's tracked on an annual basis, and they come up with an average time for each call. So they may say that a break and enter might be 6.5 hours. So you will pay based on that formula. So when you look at Malahide <clears throat> calls for service, you can see the trend from 2015 to 2020. 
Uh, we saw certainly an increase last year up to 1,500 calls, but we usually sit somewhere around 1,300 to 1,400 calls per service. This year, the stat that you see at 949, uh, it's important because it, it represents a decrease or we're trending towards a lower calls for service number. So when you are billed the portion of your municipal policing bill for OBP, you pay a four year average on the calls for service. So if there's a spike in crime and the calls go up this year, it won't be a huge impact to your budget next year. Just like if we have a decrease this year, it would take that four year average to reduce that. So there is opportunity to reduce the calls for service uh, billing more, uh, portion of your bill. So it's not like this is the price it's set. So, and I'll speak about how we do that as a detachment. There's a lot to see here, but essentially I just wanna agree with the chief uh, that you see 911 calls and motor vehicle collisions are the biggest calls over a five year period in Malahide. So if we can now go to the next slide. So my job as the detachment commander is to work with the uh, community policing committee that we have in Malahide, to work with the police services board and to work with the OBP as a whole to reduce those reactive calls for service that we respond to, which will impact your billing. So if you just look at the, the graph on the left, you'll see that 911 calls from last year were 197. This year, so far, we're down to 38. So the OPP has implemented a strategy to reduce the number of calls that officers attend to. So these are 911 calls, pocket dials, hangups. Uh, we've established a protocol to reduce the number of calls that we respond to. And generally, those are a two-person call. So again, we can consistently work on programs to reduce those calls for service, which will impact your billing. Additionally, you'll see that the uh, motor vehicle collisions for this year have uh, reduced. We worked with the MNR, the Police Services Board, and established that animal collisions were a big uh, issue last year. So we, we uh, have a deer strategy, uh, which that's more public information, more signage to help reduce those car deer collisions, which certainly, as we all know, in, in Elgin County are a big problem. We have a lot of these here. When it comes to <clears throat> overtime, it's important to understand that if we have a large event <clears throat> in the OPP tomorrow and I bring in officers from surrounding detachments, the municipality of Malahide has only billed the overtime for the detachment officers who work in Elgin County. Because of that integrated response model, our officers may be called to assist Norfolk, Middlesex, wherever that might be. So that, again, is overtime that my officers might have that you won't be billed for because it's part of our provincial responsibility to assist our neighbors. That's why the detachments are staffed the way they are, because we have this broader responsibility. So it's not X number of dollars officers and you pay overtime regardless of where they work. The overtime depends specifically where they officer. So it's overtime in Elgin County or Malahide, and it's an officer from Elgin County, then that is billed back to the uh, municipality. Just wanna give you a snapshot <clears throat> when we talk about trends for billing. So in 2014, the average, provincial average for municipalities that are policed by the OPP was 356 per property. So again, that's the base service cost and calls for service. The 2020 number that you'll see at the right side is $358. So the trend has, uh, essentially, I realize uh, it's $2, but it's, it's not a number that, that fluctuates greatly. And as, as you see at the bottom, it's generally around 1% in that average, provincial average. Again, depending on your municipality and the calls for service, it may change year to year, depending on your policing needs. Again, it's a lot of information there, but it just speaks to the consistency of the, of the model. So when that base cost is figured out, there's 2,000 officers of those 3, 000, or 326 municipalities that you pay a portion of. So that's, that's why that base cost is numbered on all of the officers that provide municipal policing services. And again, I'm not talking about provincial services, just municipal policing. So that's the frontline policing that we talk about. I wanna tell you a little bit about the detachment itself and how we operate. So Algon County is staffed with 61 uh, people. Uh, last year, we answered 15,139 calls for service. We laid 5,029 provincial offenses. That's uh, highway traffic act, so speeding tickets, traffic offenses, liquor license act. We laid 1,252 criminal charges throughout the county of Elgin. And again, as Malahide has indicated, we had 1,502 calls for service. Uh, we have also had the uh, luxury of having 14 auxiliary constables that we use throughout the county, uh, community events, Christmas parades, uh, that we have access to them. 
This is how our dis uh, detachment structure looks. And this is a, an important thing when we're talking about, are you comparing the same police services for a different price, which is what we're talking about. So the Elgin County Detachment is staffed with 61 people who have various jobs, various assignments. You'll see in red, I've highlighted, we have four frontline patrol sergeants and 28 frontline constables. Their sole job is to answer emergency calls for service and general calls for service on frontline. They're not assigned other duties. That is their role. So you'll see there that we have the addition of uh, a detective sergeant, four detective sergeants, which are major, uh, major crime uh, investigators, three detective constables who are street crimes investigators, three traffic management constables. And I can tell you that when we get a traffic complaint and whether that's something I get from the CAO or from uh, someone who lives in the community, uh, we respond with our traffic management unit using analytics to have our officers there at the right time. Uh, we have two court case managers and I could go on. The, the community programs that the chief spoke about, I have an officer full-time that, that that's all that that officer does is community programs in the schools. Uh, and we also have a community mobilization and engagement officer who sits on uh, many committees throughout the county. So those officers are not taken from the front line to do those tasks. Those tasks are done by those officers separate from the front line complement that we have. As indicated by Michelle in her readings, Elgin County is divided into three zones. We essentially have an east, a west, and a central. Malahide falls into our east zone, which is our three zone. It is policed, assigned by officers at our detachment by So every shift supervisor will assign a member to this zone on every shift 24 seven. As staffing permits, we'll assign two officers. And I can tell you that as early as, or as recent as last week, we had three officers working in Malahide on certain days. Um, so that's done on a regular basis. So the, the comments about, can we provide frontline policing? The zone is assigned every day. It's impossible for an officer to be in a zone all the time. They do attend court, they do attend other calls for service. They may be at this station, but they're assigned for uh, calls for service. So deployment's also based on regional crime and information uh, through our crime analyst. Uh, the information I hear speaks to also our deployment. So, Elgin County have staggered shift times to reflect the analytics for calls for service. So we have on each shift, we have officers that work 12 to 12 and a two to two shift. Uh, this has resulted in the reduction of overtime and provided increased staffing during peak calls for service. That graph represents uh, a, a, an entire day and you'll see as uh, the end of the day approaches, which is usually shift time, that's where we would encounter our most overtime because there was a lot going on. So we've staggered our shifts to reduce the overtime at detachment and have more officers available during peak time. O, uh, OPP officers have a mobile workstation and a cell phone in each cruiser. It's fully uh, connected to the same computer that they would use at an office. So it's essentially their office on the road. They don't have to come to the office to do their work. They have access to our community policing office, which is here in Springfield at the fire hall, as well as the new fire hall just south of town on Imperial. So they're out here in the community. They do the work out in the community. Uh, they also have civilian data entry so they can phone in the report. They don't have to go in to type it in. It's, it's more efficient and it frees them up for more proactive work. Um, we also have uh, the West Region Field Support Unit. So if it's something that just re requires a phone call, that phone call is made from a unit in London. The information is entered in the system and when you don't require an officer at your house, another efficiency. So emergency response, <clears throat> the chief mentioned a response times and my comment to his uh, about the response times, I can't compete with the Elmer Police for response times because they police in a very small area. Uh, the OPP does not track response times uh, because we're deployed throughout the, the entire uh, County. So we may be responding uh, from BAM, we may be in Belmont. Uh, so it's hard to track with it. We might be somewhere else in Malahide. We're not like a fire service that responds from a fire hall. We don't track those times. Um, Elgin, so all Elgin cruisers are GPS. So we have the, what's called the closest to the call. So our provincial communication center in London, if the call is in the north end, if it's in Avon and a Middlesex car is closer because our other officers might be in Port Bruce, the Middlesex car will be dispatched to get here quicker. So it's GPS controlled, it's closest to the call. So regardless of where the officers are, the closest cars will respond to that emergency calls for service. Uh, the county is also part of a, a staffing syndicate, which is new to the OPP. We partner with four other detachments uh, that are matter, uh, monitored by the superintendent. So if Elgin County has a staffing pressure, so if we are supporting uh, something that's going on in Caledonia, I have officers come to Elgin from Chatham, from Middlesex, from Lambton, and as far away as Essex as need be. So our staffing is always taken care of. I just want to give you a couple of capacity examples, which I think are important uh, to understand is when you look at your comparators for your two police services versus the cost. 
So I'll give you a bit of a story and then I'll give you the details. So in December 8th, at 2018, the report of a collision on John Wise Line in Jaffa, just east of Springwater Road at 2.19 a.m. The first officer arrives at that scene at 2.28 a.m. The passenger in that vehicle, a 25-year-old male, is dead in the passenger seat. The driver is located outside of the vehicle and initially denies being the driver of that motor vehicle. The responding officer arrests that driver for impaired operation of a motor vehicle causing death. I just want to give you a list of the resources that we used in that call. So on that initial call for service, three Elgin officers respond to that call. And as the chief indicated, that is the entire complement that they're going to have working for you in Malawi. Those three officers respond along with the supervisor. So there's four officers at the scene. The first officer arrests the driver for impaired driving. The second officer at the scene is a qualified breath technician and has to go to the hospital to do the breath test. The third officer on the scene maintains the integrity of the scene along with the supervisor, while two additional Elgin units show up. We then call upon Middlesex and Oxford to send us officers to help block the roads. The, the shift sergeant who's there then has to take another constable and go to Port Stanley and do the notification for the next of kin for this deceased young man's family. So again, we're looking at about seven or eight officers for one event. In total, 22 officers are engaged or assigned during this investigation. One major crime detective is assigned as the major case manager with three other lead detectives. The regional traffic sergeant is assigned, and this is part of that traffic provincial study that are the numbers that you saw on the side. So they are engaged as a major case manager for that investigation. The detachment manager also responds. Excuse me. Sorry, uh, Mary, I apologize if it might be a little bit long. My voice isn't helping. Uh, so our technical collision investigators attend for, as part of our provincial traffic team. Our forensic identification unit attends. And we also engage our forensic video analyst and a recon who is a, a full accident reconstructionist. 147 reports, statements, and affidavit, affidavits are added to the occurrence. Three search warrants executed for DNA, electronic data, and medical records. 19 video recorded witness statements. 31 officers enter statements as part of their investigation. And one Elgin County officer who I don't have to take off the road is assigned as a victim liaison throughout this process. The point I'm making is all of these resources are used to do this investigation. The initial officer dispatched to this call is put back on the road to continue answering calls. It, it's about capacity. So in, in the deployment model or what the, the chief is proposing from Elmer, this capacity doesn't exist in my, in my humble uh, submission. That, that you don't get with the OPP. And, and I, I'd like to follow up a question that uh, Councillor Widner had asked me in a previous meeting. Will the OPP attend and assist in this regard? If we are not policing malahide, we will attend and assist uh, what's called in a mutual aid a fashion. So emergent services. So if a life needs to be saved or an officer needs assistance, we will ascend for that. But as the detachment commander of Elgin County, I'm not submitting any of these resources to assist with the frontline investigation that must be followed up by the Elmer Police Service. So I'm just, again, trying to get the impact of, of, of the scope of those investigations. And just to follow up, the accused in that uh, collision did plead guilty and, and received five years uh, in jail as well. Next. The last thing I wanna speak about is other further capacity in relation to uh, crime. And I spoke to a, a gentleman at the back of the room at the beginning, and this ties in. Uh, since uh, December 28, we had break-ins that were occurring as a result of people going to funerals. So someone would pass away in their family, people would go to the visitation of the funerals, and we had suspects breaking into people's homes while they were at funerals. Uh, ultimately, that resulted in 34 break-in enters that stretched between Strathroy, Stratford, Elgin, Middlesex, Huron, uh, Norfolk, I believe also in the town of Elmer. Because I have three uh, street crime detectives, who are fully surveillance trained, who are supported by regional analysts, who are part of a bigger regional street crime team that are part of the frontline service you get by having the OPP. Uh, they were able to do this multi-jurisdictional investigation. As a result, uh, we're able to catch these people in the act, uh, clear up 34 uh, break and enters, conduct search warrants uh, as a result of that and recover $100,000 worth of stolen property. So again, it all speaks to capacity. I can tell you over the last, in Springfield and specifically over the last two weekends, we've had a little bit of rash of break-ins in vehicles as well as stolen vehicles. 
Uh, our street crime, again, based on our analysts providing them information, has already picked up on suspects. It's again a multi jurisdictional uh, event that's occurring in Elgin County, Malahide, and in Norfolk. And again, it's the capacity that they have to follow that up uh, throughout. And, and if we talk about that capacity, when we talk about the Elmer Police Service, and it's not a comment on the officers, they're all uh, outstanding people. If they're all assigned to a frontline platoon, in order for them to do these tasks and these things that I'm talking about, it takes them from frontline, where we have the capacity to do all of this extra uh, with, with what we have while not taking away from the frontline. And again, it's, it's not a comment towards the Elmer Police, it's just what you get. Yes, uh, the billing, the numbers show what they do, in my submission to the, to the group, uh, based on your uh, scope of what you're asking for, you don't have two similar police services and one is less. I would suggest you have a, uh, a lesser contract with, with Elmer and they don't provide the same capacity or scope that you'll get. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess for you to chief Horvath. I don't know if you have the report ahead of or in front of you, but the um, with all the numbers on it. On page four, it states that the um, we got a cost of 364.32 for average cost of available property. Do you have that report there? <clears throat> Yes, that is correct, sir. Is that number the correct number? It is based on the uh, uh, 200 or 2,950 households. And then uh, it's uh, broken down further based on the OPP uh, count per billable property, which is at 3379, and that would be at 31807. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that because there was a little discrepancy there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Would it be possible to get a copy of each of these presentations, a hard copy, a paper copy in the near future? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, since we've ended on the, uh, the, the case study on the John Wise incident, could we have a response from Chief Horvat? Of because uh, there were some comments made about capacity and saying that Elmer would not be able to provide that, and um, I, I saw a little bit of a reaction, and I was curious uh, for your commentary. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, yes, OPP or uh, Elmer Police Service does have the capacity to respond to those types of calls. We may not deploy 32 officers to a particular uh, incident that occurred uh, in Malahide or in Elmer, but certainly when it comes to expertise and the uh, uh, service providers that we have, uh, we have a, re a reconstructionist, we have people that are uh, well-trained in uh, major case management in uh, criminal investigations. Uh, uh, so, analysis, we, we have those resources that are available to us. Again, we would not deploy 32 people to a particular crime scene uh, or a particular traffic collision, but certainly we do have the capacity and the expertise to, uh, to deal with, uh, with those uh, types of calls.
Uh, Your Worship, through you, there has been just one written submission received to date. It was from Martin Baldy. He writes that he has reviewed a fair bit of the reports. Uh, He says, I was always under the impression Almer had the highest cost per household in Ontario. This report shows differently. I am not, I have not compared to the rest of the province. As far as coverage and support, it looks like we should be well looked after. The savings look appealing. It seems to work well in Strathroy, Caradoc. However, the whole municipality is combined there. Uh, thanks to those have re- who have reviewed this and brought it to the ratepayers, uh, he indicates that he cannot attend as he's out of town this week. Those are the comments received. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, now we'll turn it over to the public meeting. Uh, certainly the council uh, encourages and appreciates residents providing input into our decisions and uh, making process. Communication is vital for the development of effective municipal government. For communication to be truly effective, it needs to be provided in a respectful manner, recognizing the fact that others may have a differing opinion on the matter that is under discussion. Again, I would like to remind everyone that if you wish to ask a question or provide input, we require you speak from the podium so that everyone in attendance, as well as those watching on video, are able to hear you. You must continue your mask until you're situated at the podium. Then if you wish, you can remove your, remove your mask while you're speaking in order to be heard through the microphone system. Once you're finished speaking, uh, you should put your mask on before you return to the seat. So please raise your hand if you wish to speak. I will ask you to come forward. When you do, please provide your name and address for the official record. I'll ask, I'll ask you to keep your questions to one Uh, We have a number of people here that are probably interested, and certainly once we've gone through everyone, uh, you're uh, certainly welcome to ask a second question. So now I will open to the floor. Does anyone have a question that they wish to ask any of these gentlemen? Sir, come ahead. I thought it was you, John, but I couldn't tell from the mask. Uh, Yes, Yes, uh, my name is John Weninger. I am a resident of Malhide in the south end of the township. Um, thank you officers for your community services. I know definitely OPP and Elmer Police have always been there supporting the community. It's very important for the community. Um, so I have one question for um, Commander Butler. Um, if, for say in the future that uh, the Elmer Police were policing in Malahide Township and they requested special services from you, what would it cost uh, to dispatch, say, a canine unit aircraft and a SWAT team uh, on average? Good, Mike. Power on? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> uh, again, I, I don't know that I could give you that number off the top of my head as far as what would it cost. I mean, it boils down to providing uh, a formula that would calculate based on the, the equipment, the officers, uh, if you go through the framework agreement, so the Elmer Police has a framework agreement that was signed in 2005 uh, that covered uh, what the, the uh, services provided could be. Those have all since expired and we're all waiting for the Police Services Act uh, again to, to change and come new where they can be renegotiated. Uh, at that time, perhaps they might uh, place a cost to it. I can tell you that certainly you know, you're, you're looking at uh, several thousands of dollars for a, an alert response a canine uh, and the, the, you know, obviously the equipment that, that goes along with them. So what that formula is based on, and, and I would defer to the superintendent in case uh, there is something in our formula, but basically it would be in the thousands of dollars for one call for service. Okay, um, so if Elmer was policing Malahide and they requested special services, that'll be billed to them. Will it not, by the OPP? The framework agreement that we have currently is with the Elmer Police Service, that's correct. So it will be billed to them if they request special services. Uh, again, the chief would be able to, to answer if we were billed who, who would be paying that, but it would certainly be, it would okay. be the Elmer Police Services Board. So the chief, uh, the protocol is through the chief to the commissioner requests assistance for OPP specialty services. If that's granted, it falls under three different categories, whether it's a base service, a specialty service, or a support service. Uh, so it, it, again, depending on your contract agreement, that would be up to who is responsible for those costs at that time. Okay, so if, um, let's, let's say the, the, the half a million dollar savings over the 10 year period, uh, and they were requesting special services and you did bill them, half a million dollars could be eaten up pretty quickly. 
Uh, I remember talking to an officer here about two years ago, uh, a SWAT member uh, of the OPP detachment, and, and he said himself, when they get dispatched, it's about $20,000 per officer. Um, I guess it depends on where they're going. I don't know where they're going, but I was kind of flabbergasted by that cost. Uh, so my point is, it, if they were to get billed, that half a million dollar savings could be quickly eaten up. Um, so as a resident, I mean, I, I, I don't know what the budget in Elmer, like what the total percentage of budget towards the police forces over the town of Elmer. Um, my understanding it's in excess of 30%. I don't know if you can help me on that. I may be wrong. I don't know, Michelle. Mm -hmm. No? Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, it is around 30%. Uh, we are uh, $2.2 .2 million uh, for uh, cost of policing in uh, Elmer. But certainly when it comes to specialty services, what people have to understand is that specialty services or $700 million that is paid by every taxpayer in Ontario is that specialty service, which includes the canine and the tactical teams and the uh, analytics and, and all of those services that the province pays for. Every citizen in Ontario pays for that 700 million. The contractual obligation to municipalities are 320 odd some municipalities they, they contract with, they are not billed for that specialty service. So there's no difference whether you're a municipal service or a provincial service under the contract in uh, uh, under the uh, current OPP billing contract, that specialty service is not being paid by those contract locations currently. So certainly, I mean, my position would be that if you're going to bill municipal services for those uh, services, then uh, you would have to bill the municipalities that contract with the OPP as well because every taxpayer in Ontario pays for those services. In addition to that, when I did a comparison last year uh, under the uh, previous uh, commissioner, they sent us the approximate numbers that it would cost us for uh, assisting Elmer Police Service uh, and what that would cost. And for that particular year, it was $10,000 is what it would have cost us based on their numbers and their formula. Uh, in turn, what I did, I responded to the commissioner and basically told them that based on our numbers and our assistance to the OPP at the frontline level, not at the specialty level, but at the frontline level, and just last week we responded to a domestic uh, situation in Malahide County, uh, where uh, basically it took us two minutes to respond to that domestic call. And uh, again, it's a cooperative effort. You got to understand that policing is, uh, it's borderless. So if a, if a OPP officer in Elgin requests assistance from us, then I'm not going to say I'm not gonna send an officer because it's an officer safety issue, it's a public safety issue, and we're going to send a response to that, regardless of who pays the bill. At the end of the day, again, uh, so our costing, or my response to the commissioner was that based on our information and our da uh, da data that we had in our system, it would have costed them $15,000 for us to bill the OPP for the response that we had provided to the OPP in Elgin County for that particular year. So I would have been $5,000 ahead of the game. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you, John. Uh, one more. Okay, yeah, well, one, one question. Is, okay. is, is, we're going to give everybody a chance. Uh, Mr. Chair, through you. Oh, yep, I can just respond more? to that. So just to speak to a little bit what the chief has mentioned, there are different categories that we're talking about. There are specialty services, and I have the framework agreement in front of me here that I'm quoting. Basic services, as the chief is as mentioning for OPP assist calls, those are deemed basic services. So unless they are, according to the act, based on a full-time service, those are billable. So the one-off mutual aids where we help Elmer, where they help us, where we help St. Thomas Police, they help us, that is not billable because it doesn't mean that we're doing that base service on a full-time basis. That's when those can be billed back. So in, in, uh, in addition to the answer to that, the gentleman's question, the specialty services will not be billed back to the people who are contracted by the OPP based on the current process. They are not billed to the town of Elmer on the current process. I cannot guarantee you what that process looks like, as Mr. Tilly says, by the end of 21 or 22, what that looks like and what that impact to your budget. Okay. Dominic? 
Thank you. Can I add a comment? Because that was a, a question that the committee asked uh, before. And certainly my understanding is that the contract that's being proposed is a flat fee for Malahide. So that the risk is being absorbed by Aylmer. And if their costs go up for whatever reason, because there are additional calls, it will not be charged to Malahide. So I think that's why the consultants found this proposal interesting because we're looking at a guaranteed fee for a guaranteed cost flat. Um, like it's, it's like a fixed mortgage where there, it's not gonna be variable. The, if, if it varies, that will be absorbed by Elmer. So that's my understanding. I wanted to confirm that in fact, that's being proposed that way. Okay. Three, Mr. Chair, that is absolutely correct. What, uh, what you have been provided with, and again, we built in our uh, costing formula based on the absolute worst case scenario. And again, if there are cost savings uh, moving forward, then obviously that would be uh, distributed between Elmer and Malahide uh, Township. So uh, the 3% uh, the, the followed by 4% for the last uh, three years is certainly something that is a uh, uh, fail-proof uh, costing that we put together to ensure uh, adequate and effective service, uh, enhanced service in, uh, in many areas, and uh, a response time that, uh, that obviously uh, would be beneficial to the residents of uh, Malahide. Thank you. Sir? Uh, thank you for having me, Mr. Mayor and Council. I have a number of questions. Uh, name, name and address there, please. My name is Ian Chapel, and I live at 7022 Hacienda Road, Malahide. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start with, first of all, I have 38 years of policing experience. I was a former deputy chief of, uh, of Amherstburg. I was an inspector with the OBP. Prior to that, I did 10 years in Tilsonburg in the Municipal Police Department. Prior to that, I was 10 years regional, Peel Regional Police. Uh, so I have an idea of all the mechanics of what policing is all about. The question I have, one of my questions tonight, and I'm gonna be up here a couple times, the Police Service Act, just so everybody is very clear, the Police Service Act currently has a number of specialized services that the OPP must provide. And that, as your, as your provincial tax money goes towards, it's the urban search and rescue that was post 911. And it was for chemical issues and disasters like the Godrich collapse of buildings and things like that. It also includes a tactical and rescue team in the event of hostage takings, negotiations, things like that. Because not all police departments can afford those big ticket items, big ticket equipment, and all the things that go along with it in the specialized training. It covers aviation services. We don't expect small police departments to buy a helicopter. Those are big ticket items. What the Police Act does say though, is each police department must be capable of responding to benchmark occurrences. And I wanna be very clear with this. Benchmark occurrences include homicides. It includes second degree, first degree, manslaughter, attempt murders, and down the rung. Because if you have a murder, as a municipal police department, as a benchmark, part of your adequacy standards, says that you must be able and capable of investigating benchmark occurrences. You cannot shovel that off to another police agency, or if you, if you can, good for you, but there, you are expected to do that. The question I have, the first question tonight at the podium is that the specialized services, the OPP currently just took a hit of $46 million on their budget. Uh, that was Doug Ford chipping back, trying to balance the books in, in Queens Park. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I'm pretty clear that the OPP down the road is going to want to get cost recovery for their assets when they're supporting other places and other municipalities, and this is not free. Now, knowing what I know, I know the Victoria Stafford homicide in Woodstock cost $11 million to investigate. 
Now, the OBP did the investigation and assisted with Woodstock, and Woodstock officers were involved in that. That is, that's a, a piece that I don't think the OPP would ever let any police department try and handle a case as complicated as that on a small scale because it's, it's too big of a fish, so to speak, to let go. What I, my question I'm gonna get into in this roundabout way is that sooner or later, there is going to be a cost for additional policing services when it comes to specialized things like accident reconstructionists, reconstructionists, forensic identification, because they have labs and all this other stuff, there's going to be a cost to that. It was stated just a moment ago, I wanna be very clear in my mind. If that bill comes, is Malahide going to get that bill or the town of Elmer going to get that bill when forensic identification says, OPP says, here's your bill for $50,000 because we analyzed a crime scene and it took DNA and all these things to do it, who is going to pay that bill? Is the town of Elmer going to pay it or is it gonna be deferred back to Malahide if the occurrence occurred in Malahide? Are you saying it's gonna be the town of Elmer? So, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, first of all, I have an officer going on a homicide course next week. So we do have the proper training and uh, adequate training in order to be able to respond to the homicides. Obviously, if you have a major incident su such as the uh, banditos when you had that homicide, you're gonna, you're gonna require some specialty services to come in and assist. Same thing with the, uh, with the um, officers that are dedicated to either scenes of crime or they're dedicated to identification section. We do have an officer who's trained in, uh, fully trained in identification, and we are constantly looking at succession planning to make sure that the officers have the proper training to be able to respond to these calls. When you get an off, one off, and again, I mean, question for, uh, for, for Mike, or uh, certainly in my time here in Elmer, we have not fortunately had a homicide or a major incident where I had to call OPP resources in to assist us and uh, I mean, looking at the calls, and again, in comparison to the top 15 calls for service and certainly uh, those types of things, uh, our areas do not require that specialty services on a regular basis. And certainly if the OPP decides to go down the road of charging for specialty services that every taxpayer in Ontario pays for, then certainly there would have to be some direction in terms of municipalities that are contracted with the OPP for that same cost recovery based on the fact that they don't pay, everyone in Ontario pays for that specialty service. And in fact, if we find out, we, we also have an agreement with uh, St. Thomas Police Service on uh, dispatch because it was more cost efficient for us to go with uh, St. Thomas versus uh, Owen Sound. And we went down that road and we found efficiencies and it's much cheaper and it's much more, um, uh, it's a much better service for us that we can provide. And if that specialty service needs to come from another municipal service, we can get mutual aid agreements with them that would, uh, that, that would be more cost efficient than the OPP if we go down that road. And certainly, uh, I mean, when you're looking, Ian, that when you're looking at a, uh, you know, whatever, $11 million bill, I think you and I both know working for OPP or have worked for the OPP and they're looking at the specialty services, you, you, you would have to agree that no municipalities, uh, municipality would be able to absorb that. I, I understand that. But what I'm concerned with is the legislation does not include benchmark occurrences for specialized service. That is not included in the, that's not provided for free. It can be billed back. And if it is down the road for cost recovery, who is going to pay that bill? Is it going to be billed back to Malahide or is it going to be billed to Elmer? Well, under the current proposal, uh, it would be part of that budget that uh, we would cost uh, to, to Malahide and we would have to absorb that. So that would be under the Malahide, correct? No, no, that would be under Elmer's current uh, uh, proposal. So Elmer would take that cost, is that correct? Well, it's part of our budget. So it would be our budget to, uh, to absorb. And so I just, that would increase the taxes in Elmer if something was like that to happen, correct? Because the bill is going to Elmer. I just want to understand where the money is going. 
I'm trying to follow the money train here. Ian, we have a budget, just like you had a budget in Amherstburg, okay? And the budget is X amount of dollars. And if within that budget, there are certain overtime and certain expenses that we have to budget out for contracted services, then certainly that would be part of that budget. And there will be no additional expense to Malahide. So Elmer would, would, would take that on? It's correct? not Elmer, it's a pool of money that we have for contract policing uh, for Malahide and also for, for Elmer. So there's a budget that we have policing services. And if that expense came through, just like if, uh, for example, if I smash a cruiser and I have to buy a, a new cruiser tomorrow, and Malahide was already costing out a cruiser, then we have to find savings within in order to replace that cruiser. And no different than if I contract something out with St. Thomas Police Service, they send me a bill, I pay that bill within that policing budget. Okay, all I'm asking is that if the additional costing comes in, is it going to reflect on my taxes or the Elmer taxpayer? It is going to be reflected within the budget that we have for policing. And uh, if it happens to be over what the, uh, what Malahide uh, cost was, then that would be absorbed by Elmer, yes. So Elmer would be, would be really assisting policing in, in Malahide with any overages, correct? Financially. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Next question. Go ahead. Is that you, Dorothy? There it is. Hi, my name is Dorothy Stover. I live at 47838 Ron McNeil Line. And um, from my vantage point, because of where I live, I probably see on average an OPP car go by my house at least three times a day. So as far as them being in the community, they are there. So my question is to the chief, as a Malahide resident, I already pay for excellent policing. And you're telling me that I'm going to save money by hiring on another police department but I'm already paying for the OPP. We all do, correct? So why would I want to bring another police department in when I'm already paying for great service? So convince me. Again, we're not debating the, the, the quality of service. I worked for the uh, Ontario Provincial Police for uh, 20 years and they provide excellent service and Elmer Police Service provides an excellent service. It comes down to efficiencies. It comes down to geographical area. It comes down to what we can provide and the service level that we can provide that would exceed what you currently have and the visibility in the community by having an officer uh, dedicated to Malahide on a regular basis. So when it comes to costing, what you have to remember, the your provincial dollars or part of your taxes go for provincial services, which is about $700 million that is part of that specialty service that the OPP has. In a municipal setting, if you wanna have a tactical team, your tax dollars have to go towards that tactical team. You have to budget for that. Ontario taxpayers pay for that within the OPP structure. You also pay for municipal contract, which is about Last year was, uh, I believe, $1 million that comes from your tax base that you pay for municipal services, like policing services, except instead of having uh, municipal service, you have provincial police that provide you that frontline service delivery. Right. So basically what happens is you no longer would be paying for OPP $1.2 million budget, you would be giving uh, like basically your, your council would be contracting the policing services with Elmer and that $1.2 million translates into $960,000 once we figure the capital and implementation of capital uh, expenditures to get us up and running. So My that's where the savings comes in. Okay. My problem is, is you are still comparing an apple to an orange because I'm losing 
the specialty of the OPD. And I know that you say that your um, police department can do everything that the OPD, other than having the vehicle and whatnot. But I still think that with the amount of people that you have on your police department and the vast area that Malahide has, I don't see it that you can be everywhere at any time. I've lived in this community for many, many years and I know what happens on the south side and I know the terrible accidents that happen on the north side. And quite often, my husband was a fire depart on the fire department and there would be fire departments deployed on both sides. I just don't see how with the amount of people you have, you can be everywhere at the same time. Plus doing Elmer too. Thank you. Through Mr. Chair, you can't be everywhere at every time. That's why we have uh, specialty services. That's why we have analytics to be able to tell us where the crime trends are, are occurring and deploying officers to those areas that are most uh, uh, crime problematic or traffic problematic areas for us. So uh, yes, we can't be everywhere and neither can the OPP, regardless of how many resources you have. I mean, I'll use an example of just uh, a week or so ago down in Wasaga Beach, uh, you ended up getting deployed in OPP area, a whole bunch of resources to municipal uh, service, one being York Regional Police. They came down and assisted with the, with the initiative with the, uh, with the COVID-19 situation that they had down there. So they rely on municipal services just as we rely on OPP services. And certainly when I was deployed down in Caledonia as a, as a critical incident commander, we relied on Hamilton tactical teams. We relied on York regional tactical teams. We relied on Halton regional tactical teams to assist in a situation where you basically have a, a, a situation where you require other resources for municipal or OPP services to come down and assist. And that happens on a regular basis. So when Mr. Chapel talks about, you know, $11 million in deployment of uh, resources, it goes both ways. And um, sometimes some services built for that within the uh, municipal structures and others didn't. And it just came down to what mutual agreements you have within those services to, uh, to assist you. I mean, we also have agreements, uh, what we call, uh, what we call um, uh, big four initiatives for, for traffic, which includes uh, uh, Strathroy Caradoc, London City, OPP, us, and Woodstock PD, where officers come into certain areas, whether it be Elmer or Woodstock or London or OPP area, where we do joint initiatives, whether it's uh, commercial motor vehicle inspections, whether it's uh, traffic safety, whether it's impaired driving, they come together and on a regular basis, we have those initiatives in place and nobody bills anybody for that. It's part of that cooperative of effort because criminals, let's face it, they don't have borders. Why should police services have borders? And that's basically what it comes down to. Does that answer your question, Dorothy? Um, yes and no. I, I still, in my, in my thought, I still don't understand why you would pay for two police departments when you have a system that works already. Yes, it may be more cost, but I just don't understand double dipping, I guess is my thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Mr. Chair, through you, yes, if I can make a uh, response to some of the comments uh, that were made. Uh, first of all, and I, and I think it, uh, it speaks to the comments uh, that this lady has made. So when we talk about, uh, you know, and the chief made comment about, we can do everything that the OPP can do. And, uh, you know, if we're throwing out years of service, I'm in my 31st year of service and I worked also in municipal policing uh, for 11 years with the city of St. Thomas. So to say that someone has taken a homicide course, to say that someone is a sexual assault, has taken a sexual assault course, I can outline all of the courses that I have. In the OPP, it's about investigative excellence. It's full-time people doing that work on a regular basis. So if the chief says that he has, an, 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 including Inspector Novasich, who I know is very well trained in many different skills, 
But because of their deployment, because of their size, and because of what they're pro promising Malahide as far as deployment, to do all of these tasks, they have to take officers from the frontline service that they're promising you. Where we provide those services, sorry, provide those services through the specialty units at our detachment. I'm not talking about tactical teams or the big ticket items that we've discussed previously. This is through regional analysts. This is through the ability to conduct surveillance based on the, uh, the legislation that lays out by the ministry, what you have, skills you have to have and training that you have to have to do such things as a no knock search warrant. The specific training that officers have to have and we certify on a regular uh, basis on an annual basis. It's, it's all of those capacity issues. And I'm not, again, I'm not talking about the quality of the officer. I'm talking about what is your assignment? So if their police service is 13 officers now or 14 officers, I apologize if I have it wrong, and that becomes 19 officers. Those 19 officers, including the chief of police are assigned to frontline duties. Our officers, the 61 officers, 28 officers are assigned to frontline duties on a full-time continuous basis. And all of those specialties and trainings that we're talking about are supported. So from a cost difference, a comparison, again, I would suggest they are not the same and that those things are factored into uh, what you pay for now and what the risks are for charging from whomever down the road. Those are guaranteed services that you are providing and you, you miss out on those. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Anyone else have a question? Go ahead, Mike. Uh, my name is Valerie Brown. I live at 8945 Springfield Road. Um, after reading through the consultant's report several times, I find it really cautioning the Malahide counselors to make sure that they double check these things called legacy payments and benefits for retirees, and that they need to make sure that all these costs are, or who's going to cover it and how it's covered. And the budget, the name the sentence under the budget was, there's a concern that Elmer may be charging less than full cost for its services in their proposal, and thus creating a risk of not being able to operate efficiently as they had been, or needing to ask for additional funds in the future. So this consultant's report isn't all, you know, um, saying that this is all good. They're saying you really gotta be careful and some of these costs uh, that we may be having to pay or help pay for, for the staffing in the Elmer Police Services, is the rest of Malahide help, uh, staff going to get that too? Because it's a little unfair if one group has one and one, the rest of them don't. So I really think we need to go with a lot of caution. And then, you know, the other question, the question I had is that this survey that you want to send out, there's a lot of people that do not have computers, do not get on the website, that are never going to have a chance to respond to this. There really needs to be either a mail out ballot or something to get the say of the majority of the people in this township, not just the people who have internet or can show up at meetings. So, I, I, you know, how is this legacy thing going to work out between existing staff in Malahide and hiring other staff? So your question is on the legacy? Yeah, like how, if, if part of your staff is getting um, benefits paid to age 70, 65, I think, oh, just a second, let me find it. After they retired, and we will be paying for part of that, then is that going to be something that will cause a problem among other staffing too? Well, I'll allow Mike to respond, or in fact, both, both these individuals will respond, but we are paying for a fee for service. We are not employing uh, either OPP or, or Malahide policing. But yep. in this case, we were simply playing for a fee for service and, and the, uh, Whatever, whatever uh, residual costs or, or uh, pension costs are all responsibility of, of the Elmer Police Force. Okay, so I'm just, you know, the study says that, you know, this was something that you really had to watch and negotiate about that, to be careful. Well, just to reiterate, my, 
the position I'm looking at is a fee for service, not looking after pensions for for the Elmer Police Force. Well, I'd much rather have OPP. <laughs> is that is that correct, Mike? Or, or Zonk? Through Mr. Chair, it is. And, uh, again, we would manage the, the the five officers that we would hire, and uh, again for a ten year period, and uh, we'll continue on from there as as we move forward. Okay. Any other questions, Kevin? And good evening, uh, Kevin Morell from uh, Springwater Road. Uh, I really have a question for the councillors. How much input do you have right now with, with, pol with policy with the OPP? I know you have, you're allowed to go to the meetings and that. How much input are you allowed to give with the OPP? Well, certainly we have an annual report from the OPP. Uh, we have people, people on the police services board uh, at the OPP level, uh, we share one with with Bayham at the present time. Uh, certainly, there's input. Um, other than that, I think that's about the end of it. Okay, because I noticed on report, if uh, we're with the town of Elmer, we have no vote, and that that kind of concerns me. And uh, that's why I want to know how much input we have with the OPP. Is it going to be the same with the town of Elmer? We're going to be on the committee, but it says right on the thing. We have no, we're not allowed to vote on anything that goes on. And that kind of concerns me. So that's why I want to ask council how much we have with the OPP. Is it going to be like the same? Like, I doubt very much we can vote on some policies they have. Or can we? Well, the police services board does have input. Yeah. Uh, certainly, the, they, they are um, an advisory board to the OPP at the present time. And the OPP can do whichever they want and once they're advised. Mm -hmm. Very similar to what the case would be in Elmer. Be pretty you, well we won't be a voting, uh, we won't have a, on the police services board, we will not have a voting position, but we will be able to be at that board level. Can that be changed? I guess that's part of the negotiation. Yeah, I think that would be nice. Thank okay. you. Okay. Mr. Chair, through you, if I may, yeah. just, just to add to the answer for your, for your question. Uh, so as, as a detachment commander, uh, I'm responsible uh, or to answer to the police services board, which is the Elgin service or police services group for the county of Elgin. And as the mayor has indicated, uh, Malahide is currently represented by a councillor from BAM, and that is usually rotated. Uh, but we also have a community policing committee, which the deputy mayor sits on. So uh, part of the, the annual planning and processing, so through our, our strategic plan, we then move to an action plan. So as a local detachment commander, it, it's not just, this is the, the strategic plan of the OPP. We are then come up with an action plan for our own detachment location. And we do that through consultation uh, by providing our annual reports, by getting information from our community uh, policing committees. And I can tell you that uh, it, it's not a matter of uh, the OPP is this big machine. We have a regular, uh, what I would call conversations with the CAO uh, and other our people, stakeholders in the community as far as issues and how we will respond. So it's not a policy specifically, certainly that's done at a higher level for the OPP, but certainly we are responsive uh, to the township based on policing needs and trends. Thank you. Anyone else have a question? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you for last there, just in case someone else has a question. Bill? Thank you. Bill McIntyre, 11748 Springfield Road. Uh, just wanted to make a comment. Uh, when uh, Talbot Street in Elmer was redeveloped, there was detours taking people around the town of Elmer. And between that and the nice roads in Malahide Township, I found more and more people are traveling the roads of Malahide to get around the town of Elmer. And police presence is very important. I see we're changing speed limits, but unless we have police in force, that it doesn't mean anything. What we have in Springfield, and again, at the other Malai fire station is OPP USOs as offices. Now in Florida, I find one of the best ways to control speeding 
is by the police departments down there park vacant uh, police cars and they're just sitting there. So just having a police car on the main street of Springfield changes the tone of how people drive through Springfield. So I hope when council is considering this, I assume the OPP uh, plan on continuing to have the community policing and have use the office in Springfield and south of Elmer. So I hope that, I'm just wondering, does Elmer have plans to have their officers in Springfield or south of Elmer to just so that you see a pleasant presence of a, a, a police car in the area? Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, definitely our plan is to establish a community uh, service office if that is what Malahide, uh, uh, Malahide's wishes are, and you will have an officer in the community. When it comes to uh, cruisers sitting at the, uh, on the side of the highway, uh, unoccupied, I can tell you that my position would be that I want those cruisers occupied and officers actually doing uh, traffic enforcement and being in a community. And uh, uh, bottom line is, uh, absence of crime is truly what gauges the uh, the quality of service that you're getting with a particular police service and certainly our goal in our uh, mission statement which is uh, uh, clearly defined talks about that absence of crime and talks about that uh, reduction in crime so you don't have the fatalities that you have on the roadways because you have officers out there patrolling and apprehending people for impaired driving uh, by drug or alcohol and uh, similar type criminal activities that go on in our communities. So that would be my goal is instead of having that cruiser empty sitting at the side of the road, that I actually have an officer out there doing that traffic enforcement. Well, all, all officers, whether they <clears throat> have to do paperwork, unfortunately. So the one the OPP now come to Springfield, park their cruiser, by the fire hall and might be in the office for an hour or two hours doing the paperwork, but it's very, very effective to prevent crime and to make public awareness that there is police in the area. So if I'd be concerned if those Elmer was doing it and they were gonna do the paperwork in Elmer and not have the presence in the community during that time, just a point for the council. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Three, Mr. Chair, just so everyone understands, uh, similarly to the OPP, we do have mobile workstations and the officers do have access to be able to do all their computer work and all their niche reports and everything else uh, in the vehicles, in the cruisers. And uh, certainly uh, our position is that uh, I do wanna see the officers out in the community and uh, on patrol and utilize the, uh, the equipment and technology that we have available in order to deliver that service and uh, to provide that visibility by uh, having the proper equipment uh, issued to the officers in the vehicle so they don't have to be sitting at a particular detachment or uh, a police station doing reports. Thank you. Any other questions? This gentleman has a second question, so, okay. Rosemary? My name is Rosemary Kennedy. I live at 11206 Springfield Road. Um, I currently, I sit on uh, Malahide Community Policing. If we were to go with the Elmer Police, would we still have Malahide Community Policing? Would we have an officer come out more regularly than the OPP? I can assure you that, uh, I mean, in my former job, I was a detachment commander with the OPP and we had five or six different community policing groups. I'm very much in favor of uh, having citizens engaged in the community and assisting with crime prevention initiatives. And uh, certainly that is something that we would offer to, to Malahide. And uh, I can assure you that uh, if I wasn't available, certainly one of the officers would be available for the meetings, either myself or uh, Inspector Novacic or uh, one of the officers that's responsible for Malahide would be participating in your uh, community policing meetings. Thank you. Oh, and just a correction on Malahide Community Policing, Max also sits on it, besides Dominique. Sir, you're up. Thank 
the next point I want to make, and uh, I want to be sort of, I want to have an understanding of this. I just heard a number get kicked out. Apparently, you're going to increase your complement if you were successful in taking over Malahide. Is that right? How many officers would that be, just out of curiosity? I, I don't want to know about the deployment. We've already talked about that. Three, Mr. Chair, it would be five officers that would be hired uh, for additional services to uh, Malahide. And uh, one of those officers will be dedicated to a crime unit. Okay. So knowing how policing works, in order to get, are they gonna be new officers? Would, would you suspect they're gonna be new recruits? Is that how it works or? Three, Mr. Chair, again, uh, my deployment model would be based on the fact that yes, we would look at some experienced officers. We would not have five recruits. And I know where you're going with that, Ian that they would have to go to college and finish college in three months and then have to have a coach officer. My vision is to hire some experienced officers and some recruits to be able to uh, compensate for what our needs are in, uh, in Malahide. Actually, I wasn't going there, but um, what I was concerned with, if you're going to hire recruits, it, let's just say, and this is all hypothetical, the start date of the, of the takeover or whatever, the new policing would take place January 1st, whatever year. Okay, fair enough. Let's pretend it's gonna happen then. So in order to have your officers, you'd have to send them to college prior to that. So who would pay their salaries and benefits while they're at college and they're not employed yet? Uh, three, Mr. Chair, uh, we do have a uh, part-time policing program where we have officers dedicated for frontline policing in case we need them. And that was one of my strategies and certainly uh, previous chief as well. Uh, to reduce costs for overtime, we are one of the few services that actually hire part-time officers for uh, frontline deployment. And uh, so let's say if we were to start policing January 1st of 2021, Ian, uh, more than likely I would hire two or three experienced officers and two or three recruits, depending on the, the, the quality of candidates that we get. Uh, we would compensate the, uh, the time that the recruits are actually spending at college from, from January to, uh, to April by having frontline part-time constables deployed uh, to provide that service delivery to Malahide until the constables are trained. And that is part of our budget. Okay, so that cost would be part of that yearly budget, correct? Like it would be the first year's budget, right? Yes, it is. But we wouldn't see the officers independent for, as, you, as we know, recruits, right? They take a while to get trained out on the road on themselves, right? Three months. Yeah. Okay. I just want to be clear that uh, it, I was worried that if they're going to start the year before and go to college, there's a salary and benefit package that has to be paid to those people. And I was wondering who was paying for it, but that's your... your saying that's not the case, correct? That's right, it's already factored in. Okay, fair enough. Mr. Chair, through you, just one quick point but to add to the Chief's comment. Uh, the OPP does have part-time policing officers. We have uh, one in Elgin, as I've indicated in our deployment model. That is at no cost uh, to the detachment Police Services Board, uh, as well as regionally, I have access to uh, many other part-time officers that we can use at any time. So just to add to the Chief's decision, we do have that capability with the OPP. Hey, as a resident, I just have to be frank, because I think the feeling I get from a lot of residents that I talk to, uh, neighbors and friends in our neighborhood, and even people in town is, is that we're afraid of, of looking at a budget that's going to get blown out of proportion again, like everything else does. Uh, when you look at other just one example, I don't wanna get off topic, but the fire hall. We don't wanna see budgets get out of hand because it, it's expensive, police using is expensive. And uh, there was an article in the Globe and Mail about two years ago was that crime has gone down in Canada as a whole. And if crime has gone down, why are we putting so much more money into policing? It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, how about we take some of that funds and redirect it? Because these guys aren't mental health counselors. They deal with, with mental health all the time redirect it back into some mental health services, get the people off, uh, some of these addicts off opioids that the doctors got them onto, help the, the mentally ill, and, and it'll make these guys' life a lot easier, and it'll save money in our pockets. And I just, 
that's the consensus I get from talking to people is that we're afraid of, of seeing, when you talk into Elmer's, like, wow, there's, it's only a town of 8,000 people, but look at the police force. Wow, that's a big cost. And I think as a resident of Malhide, I, I don't wanna see that, uh, that cost incurring down the future because we know where the budgets go. They, they never go to plan. So that's all my, I'd, I'd rather see a redirection of funds uh, to help mental health and uh, make it easier on these guys. And we don't have to see a, such a huge costly presence. So that's my opinion. Mr. Chair, sorry, focus, that's for you. I, I can speak specifically to the, the mental health concerns that you spoke about. So again, and I spoke previously uh, to the deputy specifically that the OPP has a cor corporate infrastructure and support. So I have a regional command and we have our general headquarters in Aurelia. Through that, there are many other programs that, uh, that you don't see necessarily, you don't consider them as part of frontline. So we have a community services uh, branch that, that fit into that provincial responsibilities. So I'm currently working hand in hand with them. Uh, and, it, and it's certainly something that's going throughout uh, OPP police areas and municipal policing areas. And I've actually asked the chief of police in Alma for their stats. I am in the process of implementing or trying to implement uh, an MCERT team, which is a uh, mental health crisis response team, uh, which will uh, be able to respond with officers to calls for service. And the hope is through, in, and in, this model has been very successful in St. Thomas uh, specifically, to give you a local example, uh, to help reduce the repeat calls for service for people who have mental health issues to get them to the proper chains uh, for treatment. So again, that feeds to uh, the OPP working on processes to reduce the calls for service, which impacts the billing. And again, that's something that comes from a, a, a being part of a bigger regional service to implement these programs. Uh, and certainly uh, even from the County of Algonquin, when you talk about structure. So uh, St. Thomas is so busy uh, with their population and with their mental health calls for service, they can justify that funding independent of the rest of the county. And certainly are a larger tier municipality and I understand that. Um, but when you take the rest of the county, so as our collective five or six uh, townships, uh, I can articulate that we need an MCERT member for the county and a portion of that would be supplied to the town of Elmer as well. So again, it's not so much that uh, it's, it's competing in it, but because you have the OPP engaged in these things, we can bring these programs and services as part of the bigger picture of us being your contract provider. That is something that we are working on to help reduce the calls for service. And I agree wholeheartedly that those are the people that should be assisting us with those calls. Thank you. Just, just a comment on uh, what Micah said, and uh, I totally agree with his comments and, uh, and the fact that we, need, we do require uh, MCERT worker, uh, the ones that they have in St. Thomas are tasked to the max uh, with respect to their uh, issues in, in the community. And certainly uh, Mike and I and uh, Chief Harridge, we sit on the committees uh, with the hospital looking at different strategies that we can reduce, not only the costs, but also visits and apprehensions by police officers uh, at the hospital level because it's tasking on them as well. So uh, we are doing our part to try to reduce uh, those costs. And uh, certainly some of these programs that uh, Mike talked about, the MSTRIT program, is uh, one of those areas. And pretty much every, uh, every police service in Ontario is looking at that model as well. And I certainly had uh, two, two MSTRIT workers uh, in Norfolk when I was a detachment commander there. And we were actually one of the first detachments that piloted that project. So I'm well aware of what, uh, what that is and uh, how we can reduce costs of policing. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, one more question that has come up a few times in my conversation in the community. And as the proposal as described right now, has Aylmer willing to take a lot of the risk? And so the advantage for Malahide is that we take no risks. We have a guaranteed price for a service, a fee for service for 10 years. And, um, and you're willing to absorb the risk. What's in it for Aylmer? And to what extent has Aylmer consulted with its residents? Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, what's in it for Aylmer is the fact that uh, joint services will look at efficiencies in, in both areas, in Aylmer and in Malahide as well. So that is one of the things that we are looking at. And uh, I think uh, th through this initiative, there, there will be a reduction in cost of policing in, uh, in Elmer. And that is one of the areas that I, I, looked, I looked at. When I came in as a uh, chief of police here, 
Uh, one of the reasons that uh, I believe I was hired is because we were looking at efficiencies and my, my plan was to reduce costs. And uh, certainly in my tenure here as a uh, chief of police, we have reduced the costs significantly year over year and have been at zero budget and actually below zero budget uh, for the three years. And certainly looking at uh, 2021, uh, we're gonna be very close to zero if not below zero. And uh, again, uh, through this initiative, uh, I believe we can have an excellent service for both, uh, both areas and uh, look at efficiencies for, uh, for both Elmer and, uh, and Malahide, uh, and that is uh, in cost reductions for uh, policing service areas. And I did take a look at that. Uh, yes, I would like to address the uh, comment on accessibility that's been made earlier. I think it's really important right now that the survey should not be limited to those who are here or those who have access to a computer. Uh, we do have a council meeting tomorrow evening, and I'll, I'll bring it up as an issue to discuss with staff and to ensure that we have an alternative, whether you can call in uh, and request uh, a copy to obtain a copy somehow. Um, but it is our duty, even under AODA, um, policy to make sure that this survey is available in multiple formats. So we will follow up on that. Mr. Chair, just one point. Um, the box to drop it in is just outside the door on a table. So on your way out, you'll be able to see it there. Thank <laughs> you. 